Okay guys, so we've already seen the infectivity of Clostridium botulinum using its toxin. Now in this uh, particular video, we are interested in knowing the mechanism of the Clostridium toxin to cause the infection, right? So let us talk about uh, the pathogenesis. The pathogenesis. Pathogenesis of Clostridium botulinum. Now before understanding the pathogenesis by uh, the Botulinum toxin, what we need to understand is how the nerve impulse uh, helps in contracting our uh, muscles or muscle cells, right? So, let us talk about that first. So, for this particular detail, what we need to understand is this concept. Let's say, let's say here it is. Let's say, uh, okay, so let's say here it is. This is the nerve ending. For example, let's say this is the nerve ending. And here somewhere here, this is the nerve ending. So nerve ending means, uh, let me talk about it further, that uh, the, the nerve construction is something like that. Let's say we are having axons and dendrons, remember? So we are having a cell body. Now from the cell body, we are having axons coming out, uh, sorry, dendrons coming out like that. And then we are having axon going out like that. Okay. And at the end this. Now the axon will interact with the dendron or dendrite of the second of the second so let, let, let us talk about of the second no, neuron and then again from that second neuron again axon comes out so there is an interaction like that right throughout the place and at the end of this nerve interactions there is a barrier or region where we call call it as a neuromuscular junction so let me write we call it a neuro so let me write neuro muscular junction right now this neuromuscular junction means we are having this axons or dendrons whatever these are coming out so usually axons coming out so let's say here the axons are coming out and in between the axon what we are having we are having also muscles so let's say here we are having muscles right so here we are having muscles and axons uh, terminal is this. So we are having axon terminal like that. So this kind of place that we have drawn here, this place is termed as here neuromuscular junction in this case, right? Now this neuromuscular junction is very important place because in this case all the signaling on crosstalk is going on between our nervous system and the muscle system because we know that for the proper activity and reactivity and for the proper reflex actions we know for the proper reflex actions uh, to conduct what we need to have we need to have a coordinate approach or coordinate uh, interaction between our nerve ending and the muscle cells and that can be achieved and this neuromuscular junction right now suppose this is the neuromuscular junction and here let's say let's draw our muscle let's draw it here so let's say here it is our muscle like that okay this is the muscle, whatever, striated fibers and muscle. So yeah, this is the muscle. So let me write, this is muscle and this is the neuromuscular junction and this is axon terminal, right? So we know that these are the things which are important. This is axon terminal, right? Now usually what happens is that inside this axon terminal what we are having, we are having some important chemical components. Now those chemical components generally help uh, to, to transfer some chemical information from this axon terminal to the muscle cell which is telling this muscle cell to contract, right? For, so, so for basic simple example is that it is providing some signal, so let me write, providing some signal in the form of chemical which is telling the muscle to contract. So let me write contract. Right? So this is a part. Now let's look at the detail. Now inside this axon terminal, we are having certain chemicals, right? Now the chemicals are made for, with which it is made with two important components. One is choline. So let me write one is choline, other one is acetyl CoA. Now both of them, choline and acetyl CoA, the mixture of them will give rise to acetylcholine so let, let us talk about this thing is an acetylcholine molecule now there are a lot of acetylcholine molecules that are generated like that right and they are put inside a vehicle they put inside a vehicle let's say this is a vehicle they put inside so let us talk about it let us mark them so let us say these are acetyl 
choline. Now this acetylcholine uh, and there are also other chemical molecules which can bring this signal from a nerve ending uh, to the muscle but acetylcholine is one of them. They are called as neurotransmitters. So let me write neurotransmitter. These are called neurotransmitter. Okay. Now here uh, comes the importance of neurotransmitter. Now neurotransmitters are ready there. They are packaged inside a vesicle, right? So let me talk about it. This is the vesicle. They are packaged inside. Now what they are doing here, they stay there inside the vesicle until unless they require a signal. They achieve a signal. From where they can get the signal? They can get the signal via a kind of nerve impulse, right? Uh, so let's say there is a nerve impulse. Now what are nerve impulse? I can't explain in this video right now. But there is a type of nerve impulse which is just change in the membrane potential throughout this nerve ending. Because membrane potential means there is a charge ratio of, uh, of inside the cell, outside the cell and that charge ratio is getting hampered, it's getting changed. Now this charge ratio changing is called change in membrane potential. So let, let me write membrane, sorry, so membrane let me write membrane potential membrane potential change so any kind of change in this membrane potential will give rise to a influx of calcium ion inside now there are calcium ions outside they are coming right so let me talk about it so calcium ions are outside so lot of calcium ions that are outside calcium calcium outside now there is a rapid influx of calcium ion inside after getting this signal. Now as we are having lots of calcium ion inside, this calcium ion will go and tell this vesicle to be fused with this axon terminal membrane. Right? So it is telling them to fuse with this membrane. So as a result of this fusion of this vesicle with the membrane, it will cause the release of acetylcholine outside. Right? It will cause the release of acetylcholine. Now, these things are also acetylcholine right now. Now as there are a lot of acetylcholines outside and there is a receptor for acetylcholine onto the surface of different muscle cells. Right? So not one actually. There are a lot more receptors out there and the receptor is always the receptor is always placed there. So let me draw here. Let's say this is the receptor. Let's say this is the receptor and there are a lot of receptors placed there. Now, as the receptors have become ready uh, for all the time. Now here after the release of acetylcholine, this acetylcholine can come and sit onto this receptor and then it, it provides a signal to the muscle to finally contract and then what will occur that the muscle will be contracted. So the muscle will be contracted here. So we are having a muscle contraction. Right? We are having a muscle contraction. That's how usually signal comes to construct the muscle. Right? But what happens during the Clostridium botulism poisoning? Now, this Clostridium botulinum produces the toxin. Remember the most potent toxin or botulinum toxin? Now, that toxin is interfering with the release or fusion of this vesicle with this axon membrane. Now, I forgot to mention this is axon terminal actually drawing of axon terminal whatever now here this clostridium botulinum toxin is preventing the attachment of this vesicle with the membrane so it is blocking this activity here so here it is the blockage by clostridium botulinum so let me write here it is the blockage by clostridium sorry sorry by botulinum Toxin. So let me write by botulinum toxin. That is the dangerous effect of botulinum toxin. It will block the fusion of vesicle with the cell membrane so that as a result of this blockage, no further acetylcholine can be released. So as a result of not releasing this acetylcholine, there is no contraction in the muscle, right? So contraction will be halted by this contraction will be halted by this botulinum toxin. That's the effect of Clostridium botulinum toxin. In all this case, in case of this classical kind of infection or infant or wound infection, in all this case, this thing is common that it is blocking. So let me write it here in star that it blocks 
the fusion of acetylcholine filled vesicle to the exon terminal okay and as a result of that there is no muscle contraction and no muscle contraction means there is no less ability to construct muscle it means it will give rise to placid paralysis right placid paralysis right so that's how facet paralysis usually occurs and spastic paralysis can be caused by tetanus and it is done via some other mechanisms so that's how the botulinum toxin actually works and actually in any kind of pathogenesis for the clostridium botulinum uh, this botulinum toxin is the major part for causing the infection okay so even if uh, the organism present uh, not present itself but still it can cause disease by secreting and releasing this clostridium botulinum toxin outside right so that's about uh, the pathogenesis and i hope that's helpful thank you